Hi everyone, Natasha here and around my home today I am at my desk in our living room to share with you my July bullet journal setup. So if you've been following me on Instagram you'll have seen a few sneak peeks so if you haven't um, started following me over there you can check it out in the links below. I'll put my Instagram link and I've been trying to post a little bit more on there especially since we're into the summer and summer mode around our house so that means I'm with my daughter a lot more and have uh, a harder time finding quiet moments to film so that way I can still share with you what's going on around my home. So, um, so you'll know that I actually am finishing up my current journal which is the Scribbles That Matter notebook and this is the pro version so it has the plain uh, cover and the inside does not have all the doodles. Um, so this one got me from April through June so I just have a few days left and I have definitely filled it up. I've run out of pages actually and I've started either already putting things in the new notebook as far as just notes and a couple of plans and projects or just jotting things on the side. Um, and I'm going to check real quickly. So just a quick notebook comparison. So this notebook has 200 pages including the last page which is really a heavy cardstock page and it has this little mindfulness um, section and the color has been good let me see if I can go to yeah you can see this so um, yeah the color is a little bit lighter that's what I was looking for as compared to a Leuchtturm and the thicker pages do a better job of eliminating, eliminating some of the ghosting that I was having with the Leuchtturm. But after having used it for a quarter, I am not sure if I like that more or if I like the thinner pages of a Leuchtturm because I do still find sometimes I can't tell if I have one page or two page because they're thicker. Um, so that's still sort of up in the air and I'm thinking about it for future notebooks. Uh, one of you suggested the Minimalism Art Journal. So I appreciate, <clears throat> excuse me, I appreciate that suggestion. <clears throat> excuse me. And <laughs> anyway, so I'm giving this a try. And just a couple of quick comparisons too. So this one has 234 pages. So 34 more pages, which I think will definitely help as far as having more room for notes. Um, the page color is pretty similar, so let me go to a good spot and I can share that with you just in case you're interested and in it's kind of comparing and seeing the difference. So it's a little more yellow than the um, scribbles that matter, but I think it's still brighter than a Leuchtturm. And something that I'm was missing and I have grown to love about a scribbles that matter is that on every page and I know I showed this in a previous video there is a tiny tick mark like a little plus sign here in the very center of the page and then there's a tick mark on the center point of each edge of the page which I have found very helpful and I'm going to miss that in any future notebook and I was thinking about that as I was sort of just getting to know this new minimalism art notebook and um, decided well I can solve that by just simply I you know measured and held the center as, as evenly as I could and just took a pencil and ran it down off three sides and that has definitely been helping and working as far as setting things up because anytime I need to you know find the center to work out of I can see that little pencil tick mark on the edge of the page. So that's a nice tip for you that um, may be helpful is just to find that center point and run a little line down to help with that. Um, another difference is this does not have a pen loop. This one does. Um, prior to this for my Leuchtturms, terms I was always just taking the strap and putting my pen up here like this which totally works. Um, the only kind of downside I have found is that sometimes when I'm sliding the whole thing into my purse which usually goes this way it'll push the pen up. So I haven't had that issue of course with this but you can kind of see it's separating a little bit there after three months of use and it's not a huge deal but I did notice that a couple weeks ago and I thought well you know maybe some of the other ones I've had a sticky 
loop that I've just stuck on the outside and I don't remember having that issue as often. Um, let's see if I have one I can show you really quickly. Yeah, so like this one was a sticker that I put on the outside. It added some thickness to it, but as you can see, there's already some thickness with that and it did not um, pull off or have any issues as far as that goes. So just little things to look at and consider. All right, and then I think the only other differences, we're kind of at the beginning. Uh, this notebook only has like one full page on each side for um, your contents or index. And I, thought, I know some of the other notebooks like Eloikstrom and I know the Scribbles That Matter has an, an additional page. So it'll have one here, one here, and then one on the back. But I usually don't need that much, so I think this will still work out fine. So, okay, moving on. If you have any questions or anything else you want me to show the differences between, oh, I guess the other biggest thing is the size. So this one is definitely heavier and is gonna be more to carry around in my purse, which I do bring mine with me often. Uh, it's a little bit wider, if you can see that, and when I turn it this way, you can see it's a little bit longer. So the pages are a little bit bigger and um, I can show you the, the count on the dot grid is a little bit higher. So with the scribbles that matter, we had 38 down and 26 across on the uh, dot grid spaces. And for this uh, minimalism art journal, it is 27 across. So one additional one that way and 40 down, so two more vertically. So again, the page is a slightly bigger page, but then I think the dot grid almost seems a little bit smaller, just minimally, but. So anyway, moving on, that is that. And I have laid out some of the supplies I used when setting up this new journal. Let me find a good spot to set that, okay. So um, as you know, I use the Louise Hay colors and numbers book just to help with several aspects of my planning. Um, I use it to determine my daily wardrobe, so the colors I'll be wearing for that day. And as part of that, there's a daily affirmation or daily kind of message. So, you know, I, at this point, I've been doing it for multiple years, so I sort of have it memorized. And I know generally that a nine is pastels and it's a day about humanity. Sometimes I'll open this up and read the whole thing again, but I kind of typically sort of have a concept, basic concept of what that day is about. And then I also use that for the yearly um, color scheme, meaning in my notebooks, like I'm trying to do black, white, and pearl gray notebooks this year, just to kind of differentiate that this is an 11-2 year for me. Uh, let me find the 11-2 year. So it also gives you a keyword and an affirmation and just some things to consider as you're going through the year. And these I have found to be pretty accurate and just um, seems to be following how I'm feeling about things and how things are going. It's not an exact science, but I enjoy it. And it's just nice to have another way to look at your world, another lens to look through. So that is part of where my planning process comes in is the color scheme is what I uh, is determined by this. So that's how I'll determine the color scheme. So for the start of this notebook, I'll just show you, um, I've added in, and this has become one of my new favorite things that I started doing a couple of notebooks ago, but I just took a card and this was one I've had for quite a while, I think over a year. And um, it's from a friend, it's encouraging, it's you know upbeat. I like seeing the message on the outside and the inside. And then what I do is I use that to jot down my um, daily and weekly uh, tasks. These are more like household cleaning tasks and like personal care or just personal maintenance, you know, things like refilling my supplements case so that I make sure I take my supplements every day. Um, and then some of my journaling aspects are all in here. And I like being able to flip that card out because then each week as I'm filling out my weekly plan, it's right there. So that has become my new favorite thing to add into the inside of the notebook. 
some of the stickers and things that I used are from the Boho Berry box. So as part of my theme, I, I do get the Boho Berry monthly subscription box. So this month, uh, the, the theme was watermelon, which was really cute. And I thought, well, this works out great because for me, the month of July is a nine month. So that's pastels. So why not pastel pink and green? And that way it sort of ties together my loose theme of pastels with a little bit more specific theme of watermelon. So I used some of the stickers uh, from the book or from the box. And then I wanted to try a different form of tabs. So I previously have done these, which are, um, actually I can show you. So I use these post-it tabs and they're like a removable heavy duty plastic tab. And I use my label maker to print the letters and then I just cut them down to fit the width and the length that I need for the notebook. But I was, it was getting tedious to be making those every month and I wanted to try something that would be a little easier and faster. So I found these index tab stickers on Amazon. I'll list them below. I think they were like, I don't remember. I think it was around seven or eight dollars maybe but I, so far I've been really happy with them um, the color worked fine for what I'm doing with the black white and gray they are like a flexible plastic and we'll see how they hold up as far as the printing because I have noticed on some of these uh, well these actually are looking okay May is a little bit boogered up there but um, so we'll see how that holds up. They're repositionable, so that was nice. There were a few of them that I wanted to move around and I was able to do that. And I liked that it had some additional things like routines. I actually do plan on creating a routines page. I just haven't done it yet, but I'd like to tab that when I do. Projects, I think I will have a couple of projects going on this quarter, so it'll be nice to have the, a place to tab those or a, something to tab them with, I should say. And um, even just things like your months. So at the beginning, I have months, goals, and notes. So those are some of the additional ones. Plus, there are three blank ones that you can use. So, so far, I've been happy with that. I'll keep you posted on how it all holds up. Okay, so on to the notebook and into the rest of it. <laughs> all right, so we have a heavy intro page where you can put your name and everything. I... In the end, I don't think I usually do that because I just always have it with me. It's either in my purse or in my car or at my desk. I don't think I ever leave it anywhere. An extra page, and this is always that one that's sort of glued together, and I usually don't use that for anything. We go into the um, contents or index, and if you've seen some of my other planning videos, you know that I, what I'll do now this is kind of my new way of doing my bullet journaling and I still am liking this whole setup so I'm continuing doing it is I start at the beginning and do all of my calendar pages chronologically and then at the back I start in work in with all of my um, just collections and reference pages and things like that so to list it in the contents or index I start with one and work down and then I go to the very last part of the contents and start at the back page and just work my way up and although I love a good hand lettered uh, yearly overview calendar year at a glance I just am a busy person and don't always have the time or energy and I came across a couple of different little calendars that had been freebies in the mail or someone gave to me and thought I might need and I just anymore I'm especially since I'm gonna have four notebooks this year I don't feel like rewriting it four times so sticking that in there with a little bit of adhesive uh, just this what is this thermal web it's like an adhesive tape and that has been working great to use for any of the pages I need to stick down so that and I found out it's reposition repositionable I didn't realize that when I was using it last time around so that's nice to know then I go into my future log and because I'm at least setting up a monthly page now for the three months in that notebook as I start the notebook, I only need the following months for the remaining part of the year. So I just have the fourth quarter months listed here. And I have found that I run out of space a lot of times, especially as we get into the second half of the year, I'm just busier and our family schedule is busier and our family business is busier. So having additional uh, space, I think will work out nicely for these three months that are coming up at the end of the year. 
Then we go into what is essentially um, months. So I have, well, I have that tab so I can get to here or to here. So um, I went ahead and put in my daughter's school calendar for next year. So this will be, you know, next spring is usually where this will come into play is as we're getting towards the end of the year, then I might need to reference that. And then I, again, found this in some little freebie and I thought, perfect, I just trimmed it down and stuck it in there. And then as I have any other events that come up, you know, weddings, things like that, that you are getting notice of sometimes six months in advance, then I have a place to jot that down. All right, and then we go into, so this is where the Louise Hay book really comes into play is my personal, so that's what I used, got from this uh, book is my personal year. So if you're not familiar with numerology, there's, she explains it in here and I have another video where I've kind of explained it about determining your personal year. So uh, 2019 is the universal year, but then you have to work out your personal year. So it's different for everybody. So this is mine. It's an 11 or two year. And these are the um, colors that I focus or, you know, they're just the colors that bring out that energy, I guess, this year and the metal and the, in, the key word, which is intuition and then the affirmation, which has been really good. So yeah, actually just sort of talking about it. I think as the year's going through and we're halfway through the year now, I can see this playing out in my life. Um, then I have a page for my goals for the year. So I think I'm going to transfer over all my current goals and the ones I've completed just because it's nice to see that I have made progress as the year's going through and I'll be happy to check those goals off again. <laughs> it's always a fun thing for me anyway. Is if, even if I've done it, if it's not on my list, I'll add it so that I can check it off. So um, then we have our July setup and as you know, last month I went back to this bigger calendar setup because I realized I really just, I need visually to see the calendar laid out. I need to, need to be able to write things on the day and that works good for my brain as I'm living through that month. As I'm future planning, I don't necessarily need it, but when I'm in that month, that's what I need. So for me, uh, July is a number nine personal month. So I know it's not the ninth month, it's my personal month. And that, again, the color scheme for the number nine days or months or years or whatever is pastel. So I have some pastel pinks and greens to go with that. And then uh, this kind of explains more of what a personal, whoops, personal month is about in a number nine personal month. And the uh, keyword and affirmation should go with that. And then what I took from uh, the last couple of monthly layouts, I had used these elements but in a different layout and you can go look at some of my like basically January, February, March. No, I take that back. It's been this quarter. So April, May, June, I've used a different monthly layout. But I liked having these little highlights and snippets to look back on the month as a memory keeping. So I wanted to keep those. So I decided just to put them together with my goals on one page and we'll see how that goes. But so far, I think that will work out really nicely and I'm excited about trying that new way. And that's the beauty of a bullet journal is you can try something new when you get bored, which is something that happens to me <laughs> pretty often, or maybe it's just that I like change, but um, that's, that's always exciting then to start a new month and try something different or something new. All right, and then I still like having a gratitude page, so I just have a real basic July gratitude page, and my um, habit tracker came from the Boho Berry box, and I, this time around, kept the header. I know last month I had cut it off and just put some washi there, but it was fun to even color it in this time around, and um, I think the only thing I may add is some kind of a little tracker for my Jordan Essentials business just to keep up with um, all my customers and make sure that I'm, you know, making sure everyone has got what they need and doesn't have any questions or issues and I'm touching base with people. So I may add that yet. Um, this is an example of my weekly layout. So, and these, I've pretty much had the same for a good six months, I think tweaks here and there, but overall this layout has been working well. I did simplify it last month and I kept that simplified method of setting it up for this month. And I do like it because it just makes the whole process go faster, especially since it's all the same 
and I sort of have things memorized. Uh, and again, you know, having that little center spot to find and then just go down from worked really well. So I use the days over here just to list out any appointments or if there are any known tasks that have to be done on a specific day, I can list those there as I'm coming across them or as I'm planning. Then I've added this little section and I know someone had asked how I handle zone cleaning. I follow the Fly Lady, um, fly, fly Lady method of keeping up with my home. So she breaks your home into five zones based on the calendar. And um, each week you have a different zone of your house that you'll focus on. So for me, zone one is the entry and dining room. And that way I can just list my zone cleaning tasks here. And there's kind of a general list that she gives you. And I have that in my big um, family control journal. But I also just sort of have things memorized or as I'm going through life, I will come across things in certain zones. And if I don't have time to get to them at the moment, then I know I can put them on that zones to do list for when that week comes around. And then just a place to jot down the bills that are either due that week or soon that I need to get paid tasks, obviously, or anything that needs to get done that week. Errands are, that's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> and then contacts are you know, emails I need to send or phone calls I need to make, or even if it's just don't forget to talk to my husband when he gets home to work from work so we can decide about something or make sure a date's going to work, that kind of thing. And then these daily and weekly tasks. So this is where my little flip out card comes in so handy. Um, so as I'm setting up for the week, you know, the week prior, I'll go in and just fill these out. And I could do something where I like print this out and just stick it in here and who knows, maybe sometime I'll try that. Um, for now, it seems to be working to do it where I just handwrite it in every week, partly because some weeks are different and I'll find I don't need to list something or there's something new I want to add. And it, I just tend to run into that, that as soon as I go through the time and effort of making something that I can print, then I want to change it or then it doesn't meet my needs. So. I've come to just keep it simple and just handwrite it and it's easy to change that way. Um, and one of the other things I've gone back to using a lot are the friction erasable pens, which are nice too because that's easy to make changes. So um, yeah, so that'll be daily things. So these are not necessarily things that have to be done every day. Some of them are. Some of them are things that are just done more than once a week. And so like my daughter's bath, I, you know, it's a couple times a week at most and I just like having it on here to track when was the last time we had a bath and if you have kids you might understand that it seems like it shouldn't be that hard to remember but there's days where you think I don't even know was it yesterday was it two days ago um, and then the weekly tasks these are things that are just done at some point in the week just once a week um, and I like to be able to cross those off as I've done them. And there are some things that almost every week I don't get to, but I still have the goal of trying to get to them. So, all right, then we go into uh, my daily pages. And I, the only thing I'll add is the weather to the top here as I'm, you know, either setting up the night before or that morning. And then as I'm planning my week, I usually will go in and jot down any scheduling things. So the my day section is where I'll put either appointments or certain time frames for things. Um, and then same thing, if there are certain tasks that I know have to be done on a certain day as I'm laying out this week, I'll transfer them to that day as well. Not always, but I try to do that when I think of it. Um, and then I've, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that as I go through the day, basically these lists will get longer and longer and usually end up about here. And then either that night or usually the next morning, I will just take my pink marker back and draw another line and write notes. And then the second half or two thirds of the page will be an area for me to journal. Um, currently, I've been doing more like memory keeping and sort of wrapping up how the day went. I have been looking at um, maybe doing some journaling like the morning of about how I want the day to go or, you know, sort of looking forward versus looking back. I haven't, I don't know, it's not an exact science, so I might do it different some days and that's okay. It's just nice 
to have a dedicated space that I know I can journal in and it doesn't have to be very much. Sometimes it's only little bullet points. Sometimes it's more long form, you know, a paragraph, but it just feels good to have that space and place to do some journaling and sort of keep that in my life, even though everything's busy and it's harder to do some days. <laughs> so, all right, then we just go into the next weekly layout. And as you can see, I used some of the Boho Berry stickers and they're cut out because I was trying to sort of keep more, you know, writing space by not having the, um, the, the white. So like you can see, it would be a little bit wider of a sticker if I didn't trim it. So that's me just being picky about it. But, um, but it was fun to get to color those in. So I don't have the daily weekly tasks pre-written in. That's something I do as part of my setup. But I do go ahead and lay these pages out, my weekly and daily pages, because these are so easy. I mean, this is two seconds and it's done. It's just a real simple thing to lay out. And like I said, these anymore, you know, I know that these are always five squares apart. It's a real basic thing. I start with this because I just find the center and then center that on it. And then I just sort of work myself out from the center. Um, yeah, so I've gone through the whole month of June. Let's see, where are we? Oh, the last thing is um, the, the eighth page in the daily spreads I'll use as a weekly review. And I was doing three questions, which I would write in ahead of time. Um, what, let's see, what went well or what worked, what did not work and for next week. And I may still do that, but I found a couple, I think I was looking at Alexis, AKA Miss Trenchcoat here on YouTube. And she's one of my good inspirations for sort of productivity and manifesting and positive, you know, energy and positive things in your life as far as journaling and planning. Um, and she had a couple of review uh, prompts for the end of the week that I liked. So I may try some of hers just to see how I like it. Um, but yeah, that's again, the nice flexibility of a bullet journal is you can try out little things like that and see if you like it. Um, then we have another week. That's all the same. Weekly review. And then the last, yeah. So this is the last week of July and it goes into the first three days of August. And I did go ahead and switch over to my August um, color scheme. So for me, August is a personal month one, which means red is the color. And I don't know, I'm not crazy about how this looks, but <laughs> it's done. I was just trying to get it done. So uh, maybe for the next, when I'm laying out August, I may take my time and get a little more creative, but, um, that at least tells me visually, yep, we're starting the new month and those are the days that correspond to that. And then I have my monthly review. And again, these are from Alexis, AKA Miss Trenchcoat here on YouTube. And she has her own pre-printed planner system and you can also buy, um, digital planning products from her, which are awesome. So if you like these kinds of things, definitely check her out. I haven't made the leap into investing in any of them yet because I still am trying to decide if I like all of it enough to buy a pre-printed book because that's where I'm at as I always seem to change things or try something new. So I don't want to invest yet in something that I know I may change next month. <laughs> so, But I like being able to get some inspiration at the same time. So um, so this is, these are kind of the basics of her monthly reviews is to go over your accomplishments, what's still undone, any roadblocks or things that, you know, made it a challenge to get things completed and then any lessons going forward. Um, and then she has unfinished projects. And then these checklists are nice because as I'm planning, and wrapping things up at the end of the month, I can go through and make sure I've gotten everything added and then just a nice little brain dump section. And then that brings me to how I decided to do my months forward in the book. And I will say uh, someone, one of my nice followers had suggested that she does all of the months at the beginning of her book and then just does the daily and weekly pages as she goes along. And I contemplated trying that. And honestly, I just forgot about it until I'd already <laughs> done my first full month of setup and it was too late to go back and have all the months at the beginning. But I, I did think that was a nice way to do it where you can have your monthly setups there for pre-planning and you're not having to do a lot of transferring 
um, but still keep sort of the bullet journal concept of just doing one page at a time as you go. So maybe I'll try that for the next notebook. So thank you for that suggestion. Um, so what I've done is I've decided just to do the, um, the kind of traditional bullet journal monthly layout where you just do the date along the side and the days of the week. I do break it up with a space in between, partly because I need that visual cue of just to help me see how the month lays out, but also because our family business tends to have a lot more going on on the weekends, and so it helps me to have an extra line for Saturday, because often I'll have multiple, you know, four or five things I'm trying to write in on Saturday versus just one or two events. And then a place for tasks. So this could just be really, you know, my brain dump area of anything that I know I want to get done in that month. And that's all I've done. I did tab it, but that's all I've done. And then I just went through and took a pencil and real quickly jotted in what each page would be for. And that was a way to help count out and make sure I had the right number of pages and not forget where things were. But it doesn't give you the bulk of post-it notes, which... I like a good post-it note, but I don't like leaving them in for a long period and then you have the lump where the stack is in there. Uh, so there's September and same thing, just a place to write events and then a place to write tasks or things that need to get done. And then we go through and I did the same thing where I just jotted in like week one, week two, week three, week four, and then I left the right amount of, of pages for each day in the weekly review and the monthly review at the end. And then I really liked being able to give myself the notes uh, tab this time around because, um, I don't know, just I have found that I, I love having that whole section at the back that I know is all of my collections and notes. It just helps my brain to think if I'm looking for something, it's at least limited to only these pages in the back. But I also now, am, I think I'm gonna like having this tab to bring me back there. Usually I'll just flip to the very back and then sort of work my way in. Um, but it's just nice to differentiate it and see like, yep, this is how much I have left in the notebook. <laughs> so it really only gets to be an issue as I'm finishing up that third month in the notebook, because like I said, this time around I did actually basically run out of pages. I've made it work, but I've used up every single page and could have used maybe three or four more. All right, so then starting at the back with my collections, I have a page for a pen test, which I think is handy to do. I don't always check pens, but sometimes if it's a new marker or something like this, this is the um, Pentel, it's that like firm brush pen. So I don't know if you can see it's I don't know. I'm not a good brush lettering person, but it's not, see, it's not like a solid, or it's more of a solid tip, like a plastic tip, but it has the flexibility, kind of like a brush tip. Um, so anyway, that's for that. And that's, that one tends to bleed sometimes and definitely ghost. So I like being able to check things like that out. The grid spacing guide, which I saw from Amanda Rach Lee, and she just recently mentioned in her July setup that she got it from someone on Pinterest. So thank you to everyone who's <laughs> passed this idea along, but it's definitely helpful. Um, basically giving you first the number of each grid space uh, direction is nice so that when you're trying to plan a new spread, you don't have to count everything out. And then I uh, also set out the quarters and the half mark and the third mark. So it tells me, you know, every 10, um, 10 grid spaces is a quarter, which I guess I missed adding my blue one right there, but I know it's 10 up from the bottom. And then the thirds, thirds are a little tricky on this one because it's an even number, there's 40. So, and the kind of the same way with going across, there's 27. So making that into quarters was kind of tricky, but it's okay. You just make it work, right? <laughs> and then um, the next page I do is the Lunar Abundance by Ezzy Spencer. This She has a book. I've not checked out the book yet, but it sounds really cool. But she does a lot of moon phase manifesting and affirmations and meditations and guided meditations. And I do them here and there when I can or when I think of it. Um, and I enjoy them, but I just don't always have time to keep up with the full system. But it's really cool. If it's something that interests you, you can definitely check her out. And this is a free um, printable she has each year. So it's the 2019 Moon Phase Calendar. And I actually use this as my uh, cycle tracker as well as just sort of being able to see the moon phases. 
And so I, and this is the thing that's kind of nice is since I'm going to have four notebooks this year, I could just print out a new one each time I do a new notebook and I just use it for that quarter. So uh, that's worked out well. And then I have a place for my YouTube business and just keeping track of ideas and things like that. And then um, a nice area for stuff to check out, which in my last notebook, I think all I really had were four or five books. Either I just don't think about writing other things in or I forget, but you know, even if just someone says a new restaurant you want to check out or a local place to visit, I would like to have this to write in if I remember. <laughs> so that's the plan. Good intentions, right? And then I decided to add a wish list area just because there are always things you think maybe I need that, but if you can put it on your wish list and wait to see, then you know for sure. And um, if you followed me at all, you know that I have discovered the Dressing Your Truth system, which is an energy profiling system created by Carol Tuttle. And you can check that website out. There's a free online course you can do where you basically do a little bit of reading and then watch some videos where she explains the four energy types and it's been really interesting and really helpful i'm still getting into it and learning more about myself i'm pretty sure that i'm a type three dominant energy and then i'm not sure about my secondary um, but anyway this is her little chart she recently came out with and i just like having it because there's people in my life that um, I'll talk to about it and sometimes we'll say, well, what is the type that has this color or what is the type that has this characteristic or shapes? And it's nice to have a little quick reference page. So again, anything I can print and just stick in here works for me. And I think that's it. No, that's not it. Okay, it looks like it isn't, but I left a couple of pages because I'm hoping to have, starting in July, a new series that you can join me in doing. So if you follow Louise Hay or the Hay House world, you'll have heard of Denise Lynn. And she is the one that really coined the phrase and created for, you know, the West and the United States specifically, the concept of space clearing, which comes from lots of ancient traditions, but she's done you know all of the training and and research and spent the time doing it and then has sort of created a way to teach others about it using space clearing so she's doing a 10-day space clearing challenge and i feel like i definitely need something to sort of kickstart my decluttering process again as we've gotten into summer it seems like everything's just sort of settled down and i need a little kick in the pants to get going. So, so look for me uh, sharing that more with you soon. I'll have a little introductory video so you have time to go check things out. But this is her self-assessment that starts off the process. So I wanted to print that out and have that in here so that I can have this to look back on as I go through the process. And I believe that is it. So yeah, after that, then I just have lots of blank pages to use for all of my other stuff as the months go on. So that is my, uh, and I'll go back and do a quick flip, flip through for you. So that is my July setup in my bullet journal. Again, this is the minimalism art journal. And you can see I have, whoops, my monthly calendar, personal month highlights, all of that. So let me know in the comments down below if you have heard of any of these things, the Dressing Your Truth system or Denise Lynn and her space clearing, because I'd love to know if you're uh, kind of following along and doing some of the same things or if you have something different that you've enjoyed. It's nice just to learn from each other. And I hope you're having a great end of June. June's a fun month for our family. We have a couple of birthdays. We went on vacation, so we just got back Sunday from vacation and, and enjoyed a nice time with my family and cousins and all that. And yeah, it's just been good to sort of settle into summer mode and take it a little easier, right? Just enjoy. So thanks for joining me. I hope you have a great day and I'm going to finish with leaving you at my review. So thanks again. Have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button down below. And you can go check me out on Instagram too and follow along with my uh, adventures there. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.